Hey, what's up? This is Reed. The HomePod Mini was just released, and I'm surprised how many questions I still had after the initial wave of reviews. I'm going to go over 10 things about the HomePod Mini no one is talking about. Plus, at the end, I'll share my thoughts on replacing your smart speakers, like an Amazon Echo, with this HomePod Mini. First is the design. It looks very similar to the new Echo Dot, with a round shape. I like the higher quality look of the HomePod Mini better, but there's something that keeps getting glossed over. When I reviewed the Echo Dot, I joked about it rolling around, but actually it's way less likely to roll compared to the HomePod Mini. Just look at the base of it to see what I'm talking about. If I shake the table a little bit, the HomePod Mini falls over, or if I barely bump it. It's not a reason to not get it, but it's something to be aware of, especially if you have kids or animals in your home. And in our house, the kids are the animals. If you haven't heard of Handoff, it basically takes the audio from your phone and transfers it to the HomePod or vice versa. It's kind of magical actually. I have an iPhone SE too and it does not have a U1 chip, but it's still able to transfer audio, which kind of surprised me because Apple's website said it needs a U1 chip for it to work. Maybe you only need that chip to transfer Apple Music or native HomePod apps. It's not very clear. But you can still transfer phone calls this way, and I think it's a really convenient feature. It also comes in handy because Siri cannot play Spotify on the HomePod Mini right now, so using Handoff is a good workaround. Another thing that gets overlooked with the HomePod Mini is running automations with it. One automation is to automatically start playing music when I put my phone on the charger during the day. This is really convenient when working from home. I'm using the Apple Shortcuts app to do this, and it's easy to set up. Another automation you can do is turn down the volume of the HomePod Mini at night every day. That way when you ask Siri a question late at night, it's not at full volume. Then automatically turn up the volume in the morning. There are only a few automations available right now, but hopefully they add more in the future. Okay, on to the sound quality, which is really impressive. But there is something that people keep leaving out. It's easy to compare the HomePod Mini with the new Echo Dot. They're basically the same size. Yes, the sound from the HomePod Mini is much more clear compared to the Dot, but it's also twice the cost. When compared to the Echo, which is the exact same price, it's a different story. The Echo wins in my book having more bass, higher volume, and similar clarity. I'm sure the larger size helps, but if you want the best sound for $100 and a smart speaker, I would get the Echo. I'm not saying what Apple has done with the HomePod Mini is not impressive. It's extremely clear at max volume, but don't expect it to beat out larger speakers, especially when it comes to bass. Also, you can pair the HomePod Mini with another for stereo sound if you want. Next are a few missing controls on the top that often don't get brought up. At first glance, the colors look amazing while Siri is speaking, but if it's not playing sound, you cannot control the volume. In fact, there's not even a light indicator of the volume level. There's also not a button or switch to mute Siri on the HomePod Mini. You have to do it from the app. These both are available on the Echo and Google Home devices. One thing Apple is doing very well is privacy. And I know a lot of people, including myself, are considering the HomePod Mini over Amazon and Google purely because of this. I recently asked my Amazon Echo what time it was, and after it told me the time, it tried to get me to buy something. Now you can always turn this off, which I did, but it's probably safe to say that this would not happen on the HomePod Mini. I can trust that Apple is not selling my data, and I'm a little bit more comfortable with this smart speaker in my home. Another thing included in the HomePod Mini that should get a lot more attention is Thread, which connects smart devices to the HomePod Mini. You might be like, I have good Wi-Fi, why would I need something else? Well, it's similar to Wi-Fi, except it's designed for the smart home. Say you have a sensor like this one from Eve. If it used Wi-Fi, the battery would last a few days compared to months or years with Thread. Also, Thread uses a mesh network that's self-healing, so it's even more reliable than Wi-Fi. And as you add more Thread devices, it will extend the range. And say a device in the middle runs out of battery, the connection will self-heal, so the other devices will stay connected in the mesh network. What's really cool about Thread is that there is not a hub. 
Instead, it uses what they call a border router, which is similar to a hub because it connects lights or sensors to the internet. The HomePod Mini is a border router, so that's how it fits in. With Thread, you can have multiple border routers, so the range and reliability is even better than using something like Zigbee with only one hub. Now, if you're wondering if this is the same thing as Chip, no, it's not. That's a project trying to get Apple, Amazon, Google, and others to all work together. Yes, it will use devices that use Thread, but also Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and more. So for now, Thread on this HomePod Mini is for HomeKit compatible devices only. If you're wondering how Thread compares with Zigbee, they're very similar. Thread is slightly more flexible, so I would say it has the edge over Zigbee. So now let me show you Thread in action with some lights. Right now you can get a Nanoleaf Essential Bulb and a light strip that are both Thread compatible. If you don't have a HomePod Mini or a Thread Border Router, then these lights use Bluetooth since they don't use Wi-Fi. Using these lights with just Bluetooth is slow and glitchy. I don't recommend it. Once I set up the HomePod Mini, the device is connected using Thread right away with no extra work. Now controlling the smart light is instantaneous and very reliable. But how does this Thread Nanoleaf bulb compare with a Wi-Fi LifeX bulb on HomeKit? The speed seems very similar, with Thread being slightly faster. The big difference will be reliability. The LifeX bulb uses Wi-Fi, and it sometimes goes offline, requiring it to be powered off and on again to reconnect it. And with Thread, this shouldn't be an issue. Also, this latest sensor from Eve will soon work with Thread on the HomePod Mini as well, which is pretty awesome. I'll be comparing these lights to others in future videos, so make sure to subscribe. A great thing about the HomePod Mini is that it's a less expensive HomeKit hub. Well, relatively less expensive, since the other options are an Apple TV 4th gen or later, an old iPad that's laying around, or the original HomePod. HomeKit is great because it's fast. You can quickly access HomeKit from your iPhone or iPad, and controlling the device is snappy. The problem with HomeKit is that there are not as many devices that work with it compared to other hubs. Now, you can run HomeBridge on something like a Raspberry Pi like I am to add more devices to HomeKit. It works great, but it does require some extra work to set up, so it's not for everyone. Plus, the automations in HomeKit are very basic. Some people might look at this as a good thing so automations don't get too overly complicated. But for me, I would need to use a hub with more advanced automation options. One of the things that I feel like gets glossed over way too easily on the HomePod Mini is how basic Siri is. Yes, it can accurately and quickly turn lights on and off, turn on Nanoleaf A19, but it was mispronouncing a lot of words. On Saturday at 10 a.m., pre-drywall walkthrough. Plus, it's not as easy to use as some of my other assistants. For example, if I ask Siri to set the volume to six, it sets it to 6%. Instead of 6 out of 10 like it does on my Google and Amazon devices. It is cool that it's integrated well with your iPhone, and you can have it read your last text message, plus reply with your voice. However, there's a lot missing when compared to Amazon and Google's voice assistants. The Echo has over 100,000 skills, which is just crazy, and Apple will probably never even try to catch up. You can also use Siri as an intercom to blast a message to everyone in the home. Whoever brings me a Coke Zero from the fridge gets a treat. Apple was presenting it like it was a big deal, but the other smart assistants have been able to do this for a while. Plus, on the Echoes, you can have a conversation using Dropin, which I use all the time. Okay, now to the question, should you buy the HomePod Mini? Well, if you have a lot of Apple devices or you want to try out HomeKit, then yes, I would get it. It's a great speaker, especially with handoff and clear sound quality. What if you have a bunch of Echo and Google Home devices? Should you switch? Well, probably not, unless you're really concerned with privacy and you're willing to install HomeBridge to pull in all of your existing devices to work with HomeKit. Then maybe you could consider switching. Things do work faster. I have my office fan light connected to HomeKit using HomeBridge. It's significantly faster to control than using my Echo. Turn on office fan light. Okay. The office fan is on. Turn on office fan light. Plus the home app for the HomePod mini is much faster than Amazon or Google's apps. However, when it comes to price, features, and compatibility, the Amazon Echo wins. Amazon is heavily invested in the smart home and there is so much more you can do with it than you can with Apple. Plus the Amazon Assistant works better than Siri. And while HomeKit will improve over time, 
I would not count on massive changes. Apple makes most of its money selling iPhones, so they'll improve HomeKit and Siri just enough to keep everyone in the Apple ecosystem. Just some things to consider if you're thinking about switching everything over to the HomePod Mini. If you have a smart home or you want to learn more about them, then please consider subscribing since that's what I cover on this channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Hey, can we be done with Baby Shark now? Baby. Don't you dare. Baby. No, please, no. Don't you... Oh!